and now I will acknowledge that late in round three, when the Saints traded back in and gave up the rest of their draft to take Adam Troutman, I was not happy. And my my point was, I what I always do when the Saints pick is I grab my M and D draft report. So I go straight to the tight ends. And in, in my mind, I'm going, all right, here they're coming back in. They need cornerbacks. Amik Robertson's on the board. They need maybe a receiver. There's plenty of great receiving options in this draft still. There's got to be a player they love. I'm, I'm going, I'm excited about this. And then they come back in and they take a tight end. After they just spent a buttload of money on Jared Cook this last year, I'm going, a tight end. And so then I grab my M&D draft report and I start flipping through. And I don't see Troutman anywhere. Like, I'm scrolling through all of the tight ends, and I'm going, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, there's Thad Moss. There's Pinkney from Vanderbilt. I'm going, Mike, D, Mike D's got 45 tight ends graded. He doesn't have this guy anywhere, so I lose it. Well, I wake up the next morning, and then I flip back through the, the M&D draft. Actually, I open Twitter, and Mike D, I saw a tweet from Mike D where he had a screenshot hey, of his draft guide. He had Troutman, the second graded tight end in the draft. I just completely missed. I mean, completely missed it. He's got to miss the second behind Cole Komet of uh, of Notre Dame. He's got Adam Troutman out of date and the second best tight end of the draft. So, yeah, I'll grant you. Here's here's how I look at the Saints draft. On Friday, we talked about what they did in round one, and I I really understand it. It's again not the pick that I would have made at the time, but now we have the benefit of hindsight because I got Zach Bond, the linebacker out of Wisconsin, but. I liked what they did. It's no secret Sean Payton was not happy with Larry Warford last year. They're going to cut Larry Warford. It's going to save them nearly $8 million in cap space. And they drafted who many felt was the best interior line prospect in this draft. So now you've got McCoy. You just re-signed Pete. You add um, Ruiz to that mix. The interior of your line is set. And your right tackle is maybe the best right tackle in football. Armstead's still there at left tackle. When he's healthy, he plays at a high level. How much longer does he have? Don't know. But you feel good about your offensive line now, and that's a very cost-effective move because you're going to be able to move on from Larry Warford and save about $8 million, almost $8 million. I totally get it. Then they come back at the beginning of round three, and they take Zach Bond. Now, Bond is a guy who many mock drafts had going in round one. And as a matter of fact, on our companion show on Friday when the Saints were picking and Kenneth Murray was off the board, we were talking about Queen or Bond. Could he be the guy that the Saints took? Uh, Mike Dettilia had Bond rated as the 27th best overall prospect in the draft, and the Saints nabbed him at 74 overall. So you come into round three and give up next year's three to take who you had a first-round grade on in the third round and it basically costs you two threes, I'm good with it. Troutman, again, we talked about. I, I don't know that they needed a tight end. This probably means the end of this time in New Orleans for Garrett Griffin. Uh, you know, Jared Cook, it'll be interesting to see if they keep Cook, Hill, and Troutman, all three of those guys on the roster, or if Cook becomes a cap casualty. They restructured his deal to where he's only got this year remaining – and if they cut him, they'd save $5 million. His dead money is $4 million. His cap hit, if he's on the roster, is $9 million. So if they cut Jared Cook, they save $5 million against the cap. That could be part of the thinking here if Troutman wows him. So they, they made a few moves to get younger in a couple of spots, added guys that they had really high grades on, and got great value for him. Now, someone did ask over the weekend, well, how do you measure value if you're giving up multiple picks? And that's a great question. Like, it wasn't just that you used an early three on Bond. You had to give up another three. But if you got a prospect, if I told you I could give you a first-round talent for the cost of two third-round picks, would you do it? I would. I would think that's great value. If I told you we get you the second-best tight end in the draft who you had graded as a second-round pick, late in round three, and it's going to cost you three late round picks, would you do it? I would. I would. I think that that's great value. So the other part that I'll look at, and I know some have criticized New Orleans because they, they only used four picks, and I'll get to Stevens in a second. But when I look at the Saints roster, when you have a team that 
has had as much success as New Orleans has of late, generally it's because your roster's really good and you don't have a lot of holes. If the Saints had drafted seven, not nine, ten players in this draft, where, where are the roster spots? I don't think you have them. Like I was combing through the roster earlier today to say, okay, where, what positions are up for grabs? Like, if you keep a sixth wide receiver, that's up for grabs. Or maybe I could even argue a fifth wide receiver if someone could come in and beat out like a little Jordan Humphrey. You certainly have spot for another cornerback. The Saints last year kept 10 defensive backs in their final 53. They only have 10 defensive backs on the roster right now. So you need more bodies for camp anyway. And there is a, a spot available for an extra defensive back. Aside from that, you someone would have to come in and beat out an established player. Like maybe Troutman comes in and beats out you know, Garrett Griffin at tight end and Griffin's gone. Or maybe they cut Jared Cook and keep Troutman, Hill, and Griffin. Uh, however they make it work. But my point is... If you had drafted seven guys, you don't have seven roster spots for, for rookies. You don't. That's the benefit of being a really good team. So I would rather in this moment, and that's not true with every draft, like in the 2017 draft, they needed that full, that full draft where they just hit on everybody and built their roster that way. It's just not the reality for the Saints anymore. They took three guys in the first three rounds that all should be contributors week one for the New Orleans Saints. That's the reality. Now, the Tommy Stevens thing is interesting, and I think that becomes even more so now with what we know about Taysom Hill's extension and bringing in Jameis Winston. My guess on, on Tommy Stevens, who started his career at Penn State, transferred to Mississippi State, where he followed Joe Moorhead, who was his OC at at Penn State, then became the head coach at Mississippi State. Stevens has even said, can you play Stevens number two, please? This was Tommy Stevens on a teleconference when he was asked about the comparison between he and Taysom Hill. I think Taysom brings, you know, his own game to the table and I bring mine. So, um, but again, I'm glad that I'm going to be teammates with, with somebody like Taysom and, you know, the other quarterbacks in that room. Uh, I can't wait to, to get to work with them and, um, like, I, like I keep saying, it's such an unbelievable opportunity. I'm so thankful for it. Tommy Stevens sees himself in the Taysom Hill mold. So when you look at New Orleans for 2020, you say, what are you going to do with the fourth quarterback? Well, nothing. You're not going to keep four quarterbacks on the active roster. But likewise, you're going to sign Tommy Stevens to your practice squad, and nobody's going to pluck him away because – to sign a player off of a practice squad, you have to add them to your active roster. And I can't see any team in the NFL that is going to take Tommy Stevens and sign them to their active roster. So you can essentially stash him for a year in 2020 on your practice squad. And then next year in 2021, maybe Taysom Hill's your starting quarterback. If that's the case, Tommy Stevens is the prime candidate for the Taysom Hill role. Maybe Taysom Hill leaves and is a starting quarterback somewhere else. Well, Tommy Stevens still is your Taysom Hill role. Or maybe Drew Brees is back and Taysom Hill remains in the Taysom Hill role and you cut Tommy Stevens or keep him on the practice squad for another year. But it's, a, it's an interesting prospect because if you feel like that he can fill that role for you and you got him basically on a flyer with a seventh-round pick, then... It's a low-risk, potential, high-reward proposition, and I'm good with what they did. Like I understand what their thinking is with a prospect like that because they've proven this type of player has a role in this New Orleans offense. So I like it. All right, after further review, glad to have you aboard with us here. Uh, before we break, a couple from Sean Payton on these draft picks. Here's Sean Payton on Zach Bond, the linebacker out of Wisconsin, who they used early in round three. Well, again, a, a real good high makeup player. There, there's some versatility with this player that, that is a little unique. Uh, we feel like linebacker is going to be his position. He can be a designated pass rusher, someone that can help you on third down and be involved in some of your pressures. But I do think this player can play inside at Mike. I think he can play at the Sam position. He's got a, he's got a great football makeup, uh, great motor. Quite honestly, we spent a lot of time, you know, without having a second round pick as that round was unfolding. Us trying to get back up for this player took about, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes, and, and finally we were able to make a trade, and uh, we're, we're glad we were able to. Wow. 
if you were trying for half an hour, 45 minutes, when there's seven minutes on the clock between picks, that tells you there was four or five picks where they were trying ahead that passed while they were trying to move up to, to ultimately take the pick, use the pick on Zach Bond. But the thing that is probably the most encouraging there is you heard Peyton say he could play inside, he could play the mic, or he can play outside. So if you want to keep Demario Davis on the outside, you can play Adam Troutman on the inside, or excuse me, uh, Zach Bond on the inside, and, and they feel like he can play either of those. Now, remains to be seen if he can, if that actually plays out that way, but they like the prospect of him being able to do that. And one more from Sean Payton. This is him talking about Adam Troutman, the uh, tight end out of Dayton. You know, this is a player that, that we felt did both things fairly well. He's pretty good in line blocking. You see his hips in the passing game. His three-cone drill was exceptional. You see an athletic player. And one of the things about a smaller school is sometimes you want to see him against competition that steps up. I think we've seen that a little bit from him. I, I thought his combine was outstanding. Again, someone that we spent a little bit of time on. And and then with a third-round selection and, and that costing us, you know, obviously our picks today, uh, we're focused on free agency right now. Sean Payton, again, talking about the Saints draft pick.